morning, everyone, and good afternoon. Thank you for being here today in this holy encounter. I would like to thank particularly one by one to acknowledge your presence. So thank you, Joe, Alice, Rod, Jane, Jean-Marie, um, Peter, David, Kathleen, Carlos, Reverend Rita Joy, Thank you, Florencia, George, and Paula for being here. And also thank for joining us, everyone who will be with us maybe later on, or you who join us through the videos we have in YouTube and those videos that we share um, through different digital tools. Everyone is welcome to this holy encounter. So thank you for making this uh, space of heaven possible with your presence. Before starting with the holy encounter today, I would like to give some information um, to give the context of this encounter for those who join us for the first time and also for us to remember the purpose of this encounter. These holy encounters have been instituted by our Immaculate Mother Mary, who said to me that these type of groups are going to be extended all over the world, not only through Choose Only Love, which is the manifestation that we use here in these holy encounters, and also the other manifestations that I receive, but also there are so many groups like this um, all around the world gathered by different manifestations or just by the intention and the desire of being united by the truth. Every time that we are together seeking the truth and united by love, Christ is present and when Christ is present, our Immaculate Mother Mary and the angels are present too. So she said to me that she is going to be present in these holy encounters. So I received the gift of being able to see how heaven is open during the beginning of these holy encounters. And a core of angels comes to us singing a song of gratitude. That is the song of gratitude that exists in every single aspect of creation. That song of gratitude is the response from us as a creator, as, uh, as being created to the creator for giving us the existence. Within that song of gratitude, I will immaculate Mother Mary comes to us in all her glory, purity, and holiness. And she gives a particular embrace to every single person in these holy encounters. No matter whether you are present here and now uh, with your body and with your humanity, um, if you also participate through the videos or in many other ways like being in spirit and truth through praying or however you join us, you will receive the grace of the embrace of Mary. The grace of the embrace of Mary is the grace of the new times according to her. It is a particular embrace, the embrace from the mother to the son, from the mother to the daughter, it is an embrace in which the soul receives a particular grace that that soul needs at that time. Sometimes during the end of the holy encounters, I receive the gift of being able to see again how the core of angel begins with a song of gratitude. And when that song comes back to, to my ears in the spirit, our Immaculate Mother Mary returns to heaven 
in all her glory. And one angel comes to each person and remains with that person forever and ever. So we receive not only the grace of the embrace of Mary, but also the gift of an angel. That angel is with us, helping us to accomplish the purpose of our existence. So he is serving the cause and effect of love through helping us to know who we are and to live in harmony with the truth about who we are. Those are the graces and the blessings and the gifts that we receive in these holy encounters. So I would like to thank you very much for making this possible with your presence, with your yes to love, not only because of what we receive personally, but also because every time that we receive the divine grace, that grace is extended not only to everything that is part of our existence, but also to the entire universe, including our friends and families and everyone in this world. So thank you for healing the world in this way and for allowing the divine grace to flow from the sacred heart of Jesus to the rest of the universe through you and through these holy encounters. In order to organize these holy encounters, we divide it into three sections. The first section is dedicated to silence. So we give five or seven minutes to be in silence. So we can prepare our humanity to receive more consciously our, um, to our Immaculate Mother Mary, to the angels, and also to the heavenly wisdom that we are going to receive in these holy encounters. After the period of silence, we dedicate the second part for reading. We are going to read um, some part of Choose Only Love. In this opportunity, I would like to share with you the following chapter, which is in book number four, Choose Only Love, book number four, second subtitle, which is called The Treasures of Being. That is on page 138. And we are going to read all these subtitles today. So again, for those who want to look for in the book, we are going to read from Choose Only Lab book number four um, in page, on page 138, the second subtitle, which is called The Treasures of Being. And that is on in the chapter 16, whose title is A New Beginning. That's part of that chapter. So we are going to share the um, text. So if you don't have the, the book, please don't worry because you, you will be able to read it on the screen or in any other device. I would like to ask anyone if you want to read so we can share that. I will write the sequence on the chat room so you can follow after that. So we, can, we have Joe, then Alice, Rod, Peter, Jen Marie, then we have David, Catherine, Reverend Rita Joy, then Paula, George, then Aline. Thank you, Aline, for coming. Love to see you. I hope I not missing anyone. So we have Joe, Alice, Rod, Peter, 
Jean Marie, David, Catherine, Reverend Rita Joy, Paula, George, and Aline. Am I missing anyone? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see the names and the sequence in the chat room. So um, just in case you, you want to follow um, properly the sequence. We are going to read one paragraph each. And please, Aline, uh, because you are going to be the last one uh, who will read, please go until the end of, uh, of, the, uh, of the chapter. I would like to thank uh, Lourdes for coming as well. Uh, we love to have you here. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. After the reading session, we dedicate the rest of the Holy Encounter to sharing. So um, we have the opportunity to ask any question uh, related to the text that we read or to whatever our heart is wants to you know wants to to, to ask. So be, please feel free to be absolutely open and to ask any question you have or to share whatever you feel in your heart, no matter whether that sharing is directly related to you, to Sunday Lab or not. Everything that the Holy Spirit wants you to share with us is going to be um, addressed by our Immaculate Mother Mary the angels and Christ. And of course, we are going to be blessed by that sharing because it's part of what you are. So thank you for sharing your heart, your mind and your soul and your humanity with your presence here. It is very important for our Immaculate Mother Mary that we have the experience of being who we truly are without you know, pretending to be what we are not. So everything that you feel, everything that you want to express from the bottom of your heart, united to the spirit is welcome. Again, thank you for being here with us. And we say also welcome to Adriana and to everyone who is going to join us um, during this holy encounter. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would like to begin with the silence time. So we are going to dedicate seven minutes to silence and then we are going to move to the reading session. I will begin with the first paragraph and then you keep going as it is uh, in the chat room. Thank you very much.
the treasures of being. You will be what you should be. You will be the Christ of God, awakening your sisters and brothers with your single existence, along with all beings that inhabit Earth. Your radiance does not come from the thinking mind, which is not the living Christ. You illuminate by the mere fact of being, because you are true light. You are a being of light. You will increasingly unify with children of light according to the law of attracting that which is alike. Love attracts love. Light attracts holiness. Where light exists, darkness cannot. Children of light are already enlightened, just as you are. Do not judge their different ways of enlightening. Children of light are the same saviors of the world. Without them, there would be no hope that the physical universe would return to the love of God. These children of holiness are reborn from the Spirit of God for the salvation of the whole world. They are the co-creators of the Second Advent. They have accepted holiness for themselves, not because they have won it in some way, but because in humility they recognize that holiness is the gift of God for all. They have received it with joy in their hearts. They are those who love themselves as God loves them. Beauty of heaven, your thinking mind is a blessing from God, an effable gift of love as is everything that comes from the Creator. Honor your mind, let it serve what it was created for, to be a blessed mirror of divine truth, the abode of wisdom, the sacred temple where the sweetness of love dwells. Brother, sister, you were also given a heart that allows you to do what it always knows how to do that for which it was created. Allow it to be a pure vessel where love overflows to such an extent that it floods the earth with its peace, beauty, and holiness. You have a heart for love. Honor it as the treasure of Christ, the temple of God. You have been given a spirit capable of holding both mind and the heart united with will and memory. This union is similar to God. Soul in love. With so many treasures, treasures received, with so much beauty given, how could you not be the perfect reflection of the Christ of God? Christ lives in you. Christ is what you really are. We can keep with Catherine and then Reverend Rita Joy, if you want. Yeah, Catherine, unmute, unmute. Okay. Great. You need no longer strive to know who you are. What sense would it make now that you know who you are? You need no longer fight to try to show what you never were nor could be. You need no longer fight for survival. Why would you believe 
that you need to survive what is eternal. Harvest time has arrived. What you have sought has in truth been given to you in holiness, deposited in your mind and heart, united in a divine unity. We tell you clearly that the living Christ is that lives in you so that you do not lose, get lost on the path to truth on which you already travel and to protect you from ramblings that have no relationship to the will of God. What you are has the inherent capacity to express itself and always has. Therefore, worry not about what the expression of the living Christ living in you will be like. George, you want to keep going? screen went out for a moment. I'll go. I'll start again. <clears throat> we don't listen to you, George. I, I don't know if you are talking or not. Maybe not. But we are not listening to you. This is the last paragraph. If you can read it, that's okay. If you cannot, I can read it for you. I, I will read it. Yeah, I think George froze up. Yeah, um, maybe he's traveling. Um, so the end of this chapter says, just as water that fills a container assumes its form, so God's creation fills your soul and adopts your way of being. In this way, God, who has no attributes, takes on attributes, a process by which love takes form. This is what happens in you. We have called this metanoia, or conversion. So thank you for giving voice to these words and again for your presence. And when I received the inspiration to share this chapter, I remember the joy and happiness that I felt when I received the knowledge of how sacred our humanity is and our form. Form is one of the expression of love. And also this chapter is telling us how precious, how sacred and holy our mind is and our heart is and the form we have which means our body and our personality in other way in other words our humanity as we are so it is a call to embrace everything that we are and to love it as god loves our humanity because we have been created by god and we are sacred just for the source we have. And I think it is lovely and also needed to remind us often this knowledge, to remind us how sacred we are, how holy you are, not because of what the world tells you about who you are, but because of how God looks at you. What we have read is one of the expression of how Christ looks at us. Everything in you is holy. 
everything in you is important for Christ. Not only your heart, but also your mind, your body, and your human life, your job, your creations, your desires, your fears, your feelings, your relatives, your friends, everything is important for God. And he wants us to give everything to him so we can return to love right now and to remain there forever and ever. So she can join us and make us divine in every single aspect of who we are. So thank you for reminding us how important it is to love ourselves with the same love that God loves us. Thank you for reminding that again, especially in this time of history in which love sometimes is forgotten. We are here to remember, to remember the divine love beginning with loving ourselves, with that sacred, pure, and holy love. So thank you very much. In that last paragraph, I find um, my copy of a book four, which I was reading from, which um, I've been reading from, the analogy of water filling a vessel is is just so beautiful and uh, i'm not even speaking as an artist which i am speaking as but that that beautiful analogy of water filling a vessel and describing the shape um uh, that the vessel gives it um is a most beautiful analogy of of the way god's love actually forms us and and um irrespective of our of our nature you know we the master designer created individuality right back in the creation of a soul so we're, we're all god's love poured into a, a slightly different vessel a unique vessel it's fantastic now i marked it with my pencil when i first read that paragraph so beautiful you. Thank you, Rod, for your words and also for bringing to this dialogue um, that knowledge which is shared in the chapter that we already read. Um, when I received that chapter, I saw a magnificent um, vessel, how it was fulfilled by the divine grace. And Archangel Raphael told me that the vessel represents our soul and every single soul in creation. And the flow of the divine grace is the flow of life that is going from the center of God to our heart, to our soul. So we are constantly receiving that flow of life coming from the divine source to fulfill our soul. That's why we exist if that flow is interrupted we wouldn't exist any longer and nothing would keep existing. And I was also able to see how we eliminate that flow of life from our consciousness when we pretend to be who we are not. Because when we deny who we are, who we truly are, we are creating a consciousness in which we cannot be fulfilled. And the reason of that is because God cannot fulfill us 
with anything else except for love because that's what he is. So every time that we decide not to love in one way or another, we are telling God we don't want to be fulfilled. And we create an, an, an unnatural state of consciousness in which that flow cannot exist. So thank you, Rod, for bringing this to this dialogue so we can remember that we are constantly fulfilled by love and there's no reason to escape away from life because that is the, the, the meaning of love. Love is life, it's eternal life, it's beauty, it's everything that your heart desires to be fulfilled and to accomplish the reason of its existence. And we are constantly being fulfilled by the divine grace. And we can feel that. And there is a possibility to be connected with that flow so we can be aware of how life is constantly recreating us as a new being. That's why this chapter is called A New Beginning. We are new every single second and instant of our existence because of this flow. So thank you again for bringing this to our attention, Rod. Hello, everybody. This is Lourdes. And I didn't want to really change the, what we were discussing, but it seems like this is the, the time I'm supposed to, you know, ask this question. And it has to do with the prayer that we, um, that we find in book one called the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. And in there, it has the Apostles' Creed. And I have always wondered for a long, long time what they mean by this particular phrase. So I was hoping that, Sebastian, you could maybe, you know, uh, go into it or explain it to me a little bit better. When they say that he descended into hell, I have always wondered, what does that actually mean? I mean, I know what hell is uh, from where it has been described somewhere in all of these books, meaning darkness or, um, you know, some people actually think of it as, you know, fire and uh, like a location kind of thing. And that's how I used to think of it when I was younger. Uh, but now I just kind of really, can you just... Uh, Explain a little bit more what they mean by that. He descended into hell. And then they go on to say, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. I mean, I get all the rest. I have always just said, a, you know, a question about that. Thank you, Lourdes, also for bringing these to um, this dialogue. And also for giving me the opportunity to share uh, the knowledge that I received, particularly about that expression, there was a moment in which Christ gave me the answer to that question that was in my heart as well. Um, when it says that he descended to hell, he is telling us that he already went to everything that is darkness in our life, everything that is not in harmony with what we truly are, and everything that we know that it is the effect of the separation in our humanity, even though it is not created by God, we have that experience. And because of his divine mercy, he embraces that. So he went, to all those things that are creating suffering in your life, 
before you went there. Before you went there. So there's no reason to be afraid of that any longer. Because what is going to happen when you experience the shadow or the darkness or however the suffering is expressed in your life is that you are going to find him there because he went there before you. That's why we can grow in terms of, you know, our relationship with Christ also through suffering. Hell is everything that is against love, everything that is not created by God, everything that we can say is an effect of separation, everything that makes you suffering or make others suffering, um, which in other words means the effect of guilt. Hell for Christ in this context is guilt. Every time that we create guilty feelings in one way or another, we open the gate to fear, to darkness, to everything that is against love. And he went there before us, so there's no more reasons to be afraid of darkness or whatever happens in your life. That is the meaning of descending to heaven for him. Thank you so much. I love you, Sebastian. Thank you. I love you too, and thank you for, for that question. When I received that revelation, I changed completely about my way of understanding and my way of looking at darkness and suffering. Because there is one part of Choose Only Love in which it says it's not about not being afraid or having or not having the experience of fear. It's just about not being afraid of fear. So it's the secret is not whether I'm going to experience shadow or not, darkness or not, whether my temper or my personality is what I like or not, or whether my life is the life that I would love to have or not. It is all about your relationship with that. It's all about how you respond to whatever comes to your life. When Jesus tells us that he went to that part of our existence, of our human existence, before us, he's telling us also that there's no reason to be afraid of shadow or whatever you are. There's no reason to create conflict in your mind and in your heart and to create guilty feelings because no matter what happens in your life, Christ is there before you, before you. So you, you can find him in joy, in happiness, in peace, or in suffering, in anger, in whatever you are. Whatever you are experiencing, you can now know that Behind that, it is Christ with his open arms saying to you, do you give me my, your soul? And if you say yes, you will find him and you will start a love story that will never end between your soul and Christ. And once you join him and you begin with your story of love with him. You don't mind how you get into that moment. When you join him, no matter how you were there, 
you will be, you will find yourself blessing everything that happened in your life because everything brought you to that moment, which is the only important moment for the soul because our heart just want to be within, to be united to the source of love, which is Christ. So once you are with him, you think, I don't care whether I came to this moment because of suffering or because of joy, because of peace or because of darkness or whatever, because we don't care about anything else because we got what we are looking for, which is love. There is an experience in our humanity which is similar to this mystical experience. And that is when love comes to us. Once love comes to us, we acknowledge that love. We recognize that love. And we don't ask how you came to me or why I came um, in this way or in, in another way to this um, moment of union with love. We just embrace that love and we express our gratitude and we enjoy. So there's no reason to be afraid of being whatever you are experiencing in this humanity. Because God, I mean, Christ went there before us. And the second reason is because once you join Christ, you will see that everything in this universe, in this human experience, is not eternal. So finally, we can transcend the experience of happiness, joy, peace, darkness, depression, or guilty feelings or whatever the emotions we have in this humanity because there is something beyond all of that and that is what you are thank you peter thank you thank you sebastian thank you i uh I, I'm, I raised up as a uh, fundamental Christian, or I choose for it, and I, I believed I, for a long time that I was going to hell, and I thought hell was for me, that is the place I'm going, because I cannot, allowing the norms, uh, the, 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 I'm not making it. I have once an experience, I was very young, I was 18, 17 years old, I was working, I was not... Uh, I work at night shift and it was a steam and all machines were going. And I say to God, I understand that you sent me to hell. I understand. I, I'm not okay. But if I go to hell, I will still praise you there. <laughs> and I was smoking a cigarette and I thought, yeah, no, that's not okay, of course. And before I knew it, bam, in my head, I hear a voice. All your sins are forgiven. And that was so amazing because it was unexpected that I will hear a voice in my mind. And, and, and it was not a an, an, an voice that I can say, oh, it's not, it was not real. It was so clear. And, but I was 18 years old and still 20 years later, I could not really get rid of the idea I go to hell. And then 20 years later, I slowly, slowly, as of, as of the spell was broken, uh, I knew hell is, is, is a man-made idea, it's, it was not me. But I feel what is really, where it is coming for, from, the deepness of why did I ever leave God? Why did I betray him? And even this morning I read in the Course in Miracles, the betrayal of the Son of God lies only in illusions. And I read in the Course of, uh, course of love, and that was also a very deep impact, I never choose uh, separation for separation itself. As of a bombshell came in me, I never choose separation for separation itself. And anyway, I just want to share that the deepness of that, of that, of that 
going into hell actually because it was for a long time it was dark in my life absolutely dark and 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 when i when the spell was broken i'm actually also grateful that i went through it because now i see uh, or i start to see more and more uh, i never choose separation for separation itself and that was i need to hear that in a very deep level <sighs> so that's what i want to share and I thank you for all, for, for, for the light, what, what we shine. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your, for your light and for your sensitivity and also for sharing your heart. I strongly believe based on my experience that the feelings that you described it's a universal feeling. In one way or another, everyone believes deep in their heart that they are not good enough. And that is actually the meaning of being sent to hell. That means that I couldn't be as good as you want me to be which means I'm not good enough to be with you. I would like to ask you one question, Peter, which is a question for everyone, including myself. Do you truly believe now that when you are in front of the divine love, which means Christ, Christ can think something like that? Do you believe he can think about you that you are not good enough? That's a I'm question. asking a question for you and I would love to listen to your answer. Yes, I know that I'm perfect. And only the ground of that is God created me. And that is my, uh, my bridge uh, or my connection that God created me. And that is, uh, that is my relief. Sorry, that's my relief. God created me. I am that love. And underneath, and it has to be, goes deeper and deeper to accept that and experience that. And I have experienced that. I have experienced that. And, uh, but the only ground where I can come is, you know, guilt is hell. Guilt, guilt is hell, absolutely. And it is a wish to be a cause by itself. And, uh, and that I, I experience all the pain and all the suffering, what I experience, I come to know, I don't want that. That is really what I don't want. It is actually, I'm answering the question in all, all hell. And maybe we all do that, answering the question to be on yourself, to be alone, to be a cause on yourself is not what we want. And I feel that is answering the question of the tiny mat idea, maybe, that we want joining with each other and we want, we, we want to feel totally loved and be known. And my identity is shared. And that is what I want, a shared identity, not an identity on myself. I'm not knowing you're answering the question, but it is for myself that I'm busy with to see a shared identity is actually what I want to be known and, 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 and to love and to be loved. I hope <laughs> say something. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Peter, for answering this question. I'm so, um, sorry for asking you. Um, but what I wanted to bring to this dialogue with this 
question and answer with you is to let us be aware of how the thinking mind works and how the heart works. Deep in our heart, we know that love can never think in that way. Think about someone who you love. Would you think about him or her like someone who is not good enough? When you love someone, you really don't care whether it is good enough or not because that's simply not part of what love is. Love doesn't think in that way. You just love that person. And you are happy because of the existence of that person in your life. And you are not asking that person whether you are um, this or that. You just love that person and you love to be with that person and you try to find different, different ways of being together. Because love wants to be united to love. So when we go to our heart, we start recovering the understanding of the language of love, which is different than the language of the thinking mind. That's why now we are in the age of the heart. That's why we talk about the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary and the three hearts. And we are always talking about the heart because it is needed and we are ready to do so. It is needed to go to our heart and to start allowing the heart to explain in, his, in its way, which is different than the thinking mind. We are ready to leave, you know, guided by our heart. In your heart, you would never, never think that someone who you really love is not good enough. The only thing that you are going to do is to embrace that person and to be with that person because you just say to him or to her, I don't care about how you are. I just love you and your existence brings me light because of your life and because of your love. That's the language of love. So we are called to observe the thinking mind and to transcend it and go to our heart in which our mind and our heart can be united and to start talking the same language. We don't need to have two languages in our soul, but we have that. It is like having a soul in which one part is talking in one language and the other part is talking in a different language which cannot be understood each other. And that is the conflict of human beings. So Jesus said to me once very clearly, you are called to the integrity of who you are, the integrity of the soul, which means to live in a stage in which there is just one language, the language of love and truth. So in that stage, you no longer experience conflict because there is only one language. We are called to go to that stage, to the stage of the integrity of the language of love and to understand everything through love and to receive the wisdom of love. And he said to me, what, um, before reaching that stage, if you experience a conflict between what your heart says and your mind says, follow after your heart. 
always follow after your heart. And when I start, I started doing that, what I experienced is that when we are connected to our heart, and we no longer ask what we think or what we believe, but we ask what we feel, then the mind will follow after the heart and the mind will start recovering the understanding of the wisdom of love. And the language of love will be rediscovered by the mind. And the dialogue between your mind and your heart will, will be in harmony. And that is exactly with what this chapter that we have read is telling us when it says that honor your mind, honor your heart. And the reason why we can honor them is because our mind was created to be the temple and the throne of truth. And our heart was created to be the temple and the throne of love. So once love and truth walk together, having a dialogue of love, we are in the integrity of who we truly are. When we think that we are not good enough, that cannot come from love, cannot come from love. Because we know that, we know deep in our heart that we are perfect. Because we receive the divine knowledge. So thank you, Peter, for bringing this to this dialogue because Archangel Raphael told me once that he said very clearly to me, I would like to tell you which is the fundamental problem that every human being has. And the reason why I want to tell you about this is because once you understand this, immediately you fix that problem. It is about being aware of that problem that we have. And he said to me, the fundamental problem that human beings have, human beings have, I'm sorry, the fundamental problem is that you deeply, deeply believe you are not good enough. You have centuries and centuries in your mind telling to your mind that I'm not good enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not rich enough. You name it. Everyone has more than one area of who you are in your humanity that you don't like. And that's the problem because that's against love. And he said, once you change that mental pattern, you will be able to say truly, truly, I love myself as God loves me. And of course, he didn't say just that to me. He said to me, here there is a, a great news for you. Your mind does for you whatever you ask it to do for you. Your mind is a servant. It's never the owner of who you are. Deep in your consciousness, you are telling your mind that you are not good enough. So your mind is going to bring to your life everything that will confirm that. So you will be able to say, see, I'm not smart enough because I did something wrong. Or I'm not beautiful enough because I wanted to um, maybe get married with some person and he or she didn't like me. Those experiences, are there 
to give you the confirmation of the belief that you are telling constantly to your mind about who you are. That's why it's so important to love yourself. So he said to me, today is the day in which I invite you to tell your mind as much as you can. I am enough because I am the son of God. And you can express that in so many different ways. So many different ways. That's why Two Only Love is constantly reminding us who we are. You are one with God. You are not just created by God. You are the expression of God. You, we are not just created by love. You are love. Thank you, Peter, for allowing us to, to share this. I love you. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Yes. I, I let it in and the new time is coming. Thank you. The very first line was, you will be what you should be. And I've just thought about that that very first line, because it's telling us everything is the way it's supposed to be. We're already part of perfection and we embody perfection itself. And one of the things that happens to me on occasion is I get this glimpse of what it will be like when I'm finally through here with a body and through on planet earth and look back on everything that's ever happened and I realize all that time that I was afraid, all that time that I doubted, all that time that I got angry, all that time that I tried to change things from what they were, I never realized that everything was already perfect and unfolding exactly the way it was supposed to unfold down to the most minute detail. And that there was a sublime plan which is awesome and perfect and if i just knew that i could have been happy the whole time so this helps wake me up thank you for this you, you will know, be what as, you should uh, be go ahead as peter and george were sharing sebastian uh i think we all think of the times we've been caught in that spiral but um being in a group like this and knowing how important each of you have become to me. It just reminds me the sections in, in, in this book, even a, a few before that talk about relationships. And in some ways that's kind of our saving grace and why God put them here. Just looking at a few I've underlined, it says relationships with those you love have been established by heaven for love to accompany you in the world of space and time. Relationships have been established to fulfill the holy purpose of giving you existence and a chance to get out of the confinement of separation. So therefore, there's no reason really not to feel love every day of your life all day, forever. And it's just hearing the beautiful sharing that Peter did and, and George's comments just reminds me of how I at times forget that, you know, and fall into kind of that illusion of separateness. And, and when, I, when I'm drawn back to this gift of relationship, everything that was painful goes away. And just as much as I look forward to this group every fortnight, uh, it's, it's such a blessing and a joy. Uh, we were talking at the very beginning before others arrive, you know, how I, we wonder sometimes how we got along without this group. I don't know because it is so important to me. And it's because of the relationship that God gave us to be with us during this journey of space and time. So I just wanted to share that and thank Peter and George for their, their comments. 
thanks, Joe, for your words and for your love and also for your presence. Um, we have the same feeling. We, we, we really feel blessed by being able to work together um, in this moment of beautiful love instituted by our Immaculate Mother Mary. Um, I would like to also thank George before giving Carlos the opportunity to, to speak um, because you said that at the beginning of the reading today, it says, you will be what you should be. You will be the Christ of God, awakening your sisters and brothers with your single existence, along with all beings that inhabit earth. This paragraph also says, your radiance does not come from the thinking mind, which is not the living Christ. You illuminate by the mere fact of being because you are true light. You are a being of light. This is what it, uh, it is said in this paragraph. And the reason why I would like to thank you, George, for bringing this to this dialogue is not only because it's your sharing, but also because Something that was really relief for me was when, when I understood with this chapter that I don't have to do anything to be the Christ that I am. And that is one of the reasons why we create conflicts in our soul. At the beginning, we talked with Peter telling, you know, this dichotomy that there is between our thinking mind telling us that we are not good enough and then our heart telling that we are good enough because we are the sons and daughters of God. Why that happens? Why our thinking mind is so disconnected from the wisdom of love? And Jesus said once to me, because your mind was so focused on the merit, you know, so focused on what you have to do in order to deserve heaven. And if we think about this, the whole history was focused on that until now. We have been educated to do something to deserve the price of heaven. That's a way of treating and teaching a child. But once we grow, we cannot keep thinking in that way. We don't have to deserve anything. We receive everything for free. Life was given to us for free. We don't need to make any effort for anything. And Jesus said to me, make sure that if you are doing any, any effort, that is against God's will. Just this, because of the simple reason of what God wants to give you cannot be achieved by effort. And I'm not talking about the effort that you do in order to do something that you believe is love in your humanity. I'm talking about the effort of, you know, doing something to achieve heaven, to achieve love. Love is not something that you have to gain or you have to achieve by effort. That's a conditional love. That's the love that was, you know, given to us in this world, because if you don't do some things, you are not going to be loved, you are not going to be accepted. That's the conditional love that comes from God, from, from the world. But that's not love, that's not divine love. We don't do any, you, we don't need to do anything to 
you know, receive heaven. Heaven comes to us. It is Christ who comes to us, not we going to him. Love comes to us. And this is what this paragraph is telling us. Don't worry about who you, how you are. The only thing we need to do is to let ourselves be loved. To accept the love of God. To transform our humanity. It is the love of God who is going to transform every day, every minute, every week, our humanity. And you will be transformed into a new being. It is his job to recreate me constantly. And the only thing that I have to do is to keep aside, to let him work in me, to let him transform me. Love can transform you into love if you allow him to transform your existence. So thank you, George, for reminding us that uh, we don't need to do any effort. The only thing we need to do is to trust and to give everything to our Immaculate Mother Mary and to let ourselves be loved by her. And you will see the transformation and you will see the miracles that love wants to do for you. Thank you for for sharing that, George. And I would like to give Carlos the opportunity to share. And we have 10 more minutes before finishing the interview. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's always, always, always a pleasure to be here. This is a wonderful, wonderful encounter. Always, always. I was remembering two little funny things that happened to me when I was learning English. I was working in an office in the United States. And I remember I came to the office talking about something. I just said, you got to focus. You got to focus in what you're doing. And somebody looked at me, a coworker. She said, Carla, what do you just said? You got to focus on what you're saying and what you're doing. <laughs> and she laughed at me and said, oh, you mean focus. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, what I was saying, I don't know. I, I, I just love because it is funny when you're learning a language. We really don't know what we're saying, but it's always funny to see how everything comes to you one way or another. And I keep wo working that word for many years, but now I can understand very nice just because Seba says something, so Sebastian just said something about focus. And I remember that, that incident, that was very funny. Well, I, I, I don't know if some of you or maybe everybody, I don't know, I, I used to be very confused in life, very confused. And funny enough, now I'm still very much confused, but now I know I am confused. And that is profoundly different. That is profoundly different. So we, we become aware of this confusion, and that is the light in me, becoming aware of the confusion. And that gives you really peace because you're not the confusion. Now you know. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice, these little things. And, and another thing that I, I want to share is about listening or to hear. Either word is fine. To listen, to listen to or to hear is to repeat with the voice in my mind what the other person is saying. This really works nicely when you're married. But when you're listening to a text, you know, like a, we were reading in the beginning of the encounter and i love to listen to sebastian and everyone and just repeat with my mind wh what everybody is saying and all the seed goes inwardly goes deep in myself it is beautiful because any moment any times poof it is there for you 
is, is a beautiful gesture to remember, to listen or to, he to hear is to repeat with my voice, with the voice of my head, what the other person is saying. And just to, to finish, uh, I remember in some town and city here in Costa Rica, there is a church that has a huge Christ. You know, it's, it's Jesus, you know, rising Jesus. You know, he, he's like this, but, but he, is, he is huge. And I remember that image or, or, or that sculpture, I don't know, was something like that, was like a smile, a smiling. And, and, and I was thinking to myself when I was very young, I was perhaps 18 years old, and looking at Jesus Christ coming from the dead and thinking to myself, wow, he's laughing. Yeah, he's laughing at death. He's laughing at the cross. He's laughing at death. He went to hell and came back and he's still laughing. Do you see what is this really telling you? This is just a joke. We're just seeing a shadow of an idea. It's not real. That, that Christ is showing you with his smile. There is no such a thing. This is just a joke. And you playing this joke to yourself. There is no cross. There is no death. There is no hell. And it was so profound for me in my life to have this kind of understanding that there is no such a thing. Even though in, at that time wasn't that deep in me, but I saw it and that was enough to me. This is a joke because if God is, death cannot be. It is just impossible. This takes a while for us to see because we have been in the experience of death, of hell. But little by little, you start to see the light. It's, it's, it's very nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Carlos, for your sharing and for your commitment to, to, to the truth. You are definitely a light in, in in this moment of beautiful love. So thank you very much. And when listening to you, I thought it would be important to share maybe some experience that I had a um, few years ago about conflict. You said, that you are in conflict and you're still in conflict and that, but the difference is that you know are aware of that. Um, those are the kind of sentences that we tell to our mind to convince our mind that we are not good enough according to Christ. That comes from our culture. We, we do it automatically. When we say, I'm in conflict, I'm telling our mind that we are not the Christ that we truly are, according to Jesus Christ. So he said, if you feel that you are in conflict, observe that conflict. Take distance from that and remind you that you are not that. You cannot be in conflict. Which is the you that it is in conflict? So that cannot be the Christ in you. After receiving that knowledge and I began to take distance from my thinking mind and from my emotions and from everything that I experienced, I could realize who I am. I could realize that I am the Christ in me, who is never in conflict, who is never 
anything except what God wants me to be. It is perfectly possible to remain in that temple of your heart, that refuge of divine love that exists in our heart, in which we can know who we truly are. And from there, we see our mind and our emotions, thinking and feeling things that are completely against love. But we don't get any identification with that. We don't identify ourselves with that because we make the decision to identify ourselves with Christ because that is the only truth about who we are. So thank you for reminding us that sometimes we feel that we are what we feel or that we are what we think, what our thinking mind is thinking about. And I believe it's important to take distance of that because um, we finish with the conflict. We finish with the conflict when we know who we are and we accept who we are. And finally, Jesus said to me, the way of living in the Christ that you truly are every single minute of your life is just to telling you constantly, as much as you need, that nothing that you believe is true. It's just your belief. Truth is not a belief. Love is not a belief. So that helped me a lot because I started to say, I believe in this and I believe strongly in this. However, I know that is not the truth. So I don't need to reinforce that belief. I don't have to defend, you know, and to take care of any belief. So once we take away from the attachment to our beliefs, we gain freedom. And at that moment, we are free to accept the Christ that we truly are. So I hope this holy encounter gives us the opportunity to know, um, to remember who we are and to have a commitment of telling us how beautiful we are, how holy we are, how ineffable we are in terms of magnificence. Everything that we think about the magnificence of God can be applied to us and much more because what we are is beyond words. And I hope this reminding can change our life. If we allow this knowledge to touch our heart and to be part of who we are in our humanity, our life will be changed because our life is being the consequence of thinking about ourselves of not being good enough. And that is simply not true. I hope today we can take away that belief and to welcome to the truth of who we are, um, remembering that you are the face of God. So you are beautiful, you are divine, and you are holy. And I invite you to have two minutes of silence before saying goodbye and, well, not goodbye, but until the next time. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Sebastian, before we go our way, uh, let me remind you that this month we have a bonus week. March has five Tuesdays. And so I'm hopeful that you will gather with us again in two weeks, which technically will not be the first or the third, but it's a bonus week. Because if we don't, then we'll have to go three full weeks before we meet again. So what are your thoughts on meeting on the 29th, which is our a bonus week, since March has five Tuesdays? I love your expression. Um, well, my, my idea is, as we said in the first month that we have the bonus, um, to keep receiving the bonus. So... Uh, we will see um, three times this month. Yes. Uh, I mean, in the English, right. in the English uh, holy encounter. So it's going to be on the first, the third, and the fifth of this month. Wonderful. Which, which will be, as you said, 29. 29. And then we have again on fifth going to be That's the next good. so um yes we'll see on 29 thank you for reminding that thank, thank you. you also reverend rija for telling us about the time zone yes. uh -huh. and it's a, it's a lovely way of co-creating this together and of course thank you for being who you are Thank you so much, every day, everybody. Have a, have a great week. <laughs> Thank Bye you, Sebastian. All. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Have a good Thank time. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks to all the new ones who joined us, Laurencia, <laughs> Adriana, and Catherine. Thank you. <laughs>